Hey, it's Steve. In this video, I thought I would share some 2024 intentions so I can help set the framing for the expectations for the community flow this year for those who are interested in that. Uh, number one is that this year, I really wanna get into doing more video. Uh, in fact, one of my goals for this year is to have this be the first year that I publish more YouTube videos than I do blog articles. Uh, now I've been blogging about self-development since 2004, so this is my 20th year of doing it, and it's time for a change. I really wanna get more into video. I've only done maybe 50, 60 YouTube videos since I did my first in 2009, and it's you know something that's always been on the back burner, not something I've really invested a lot in, but I feel like the time is right for a real change there, and this is gonna be the year that I really go and take the plunge and invest fully into video. Now I know that's gonna be disappointing to some people because, because of blogging, I've attracted a lot of people who like reading self-development content. In fact, when I post a YouTube video to my blog, you, you might think that you know with a high traffic blog, you get a lot of transfer over to YouTube, but with my audience, it was not like that. <laughs> um, they're really separate entities, like the people that read my work and the people that want to watch you know, YouTube videos very different. Uh, so it's almost like rebuilding a, you know, a new um, community from scratch with a different kind of focus. And I'm up for that. Uh, so I understand if some people feel like they wanna just read self-development content, but I feel like there's more opportunity for expressing certain ideas and exploring different kinds of topics through video. Because with video, you get more information, you get tone of voice, I can share things visually that I just don't feel like they're very well uh, addressed in plain text format. Um, also, just to just to you know address this point, I'm not going to be doing AI generated content. Okay, so it's all going to be from the heart, from the spirit. In fact, that brings me to the next kind of topic. I definitely want to move in a more what I might call spirit level direction this year. I don't see that as like sailing off into a woo woo space, but rather. Um, bringing in sort of ideas from more of a non-physical part of reality and trying to apply them into the physical world. Uh, and one thing that's really opened up a lot of that, which I want to continue doing this year, is exploring psychedelics. So last year, 2023, was the first year I ever did Magic Mushrooms, had my very first uh, MDMA journey. That was really in intense, uh, just amazing. Um, and I've been microdosing Magic Mushrooms for almost five months now, coming up on five months. So that's been really eye-opening, like third eye-opening and just uh, opening up so many more frequencies of sensory input, it feels like. Uh, so I've been exploring and playing around with just all the different ideas that have been coming through there. It feels like it's, uh, I'm getting tutored, um, like so many different kinds of lessons are coming through. It's really taken uh, all the self-development work I've done over the past 20 years and really privately interested in for the past 30 years, even before I started doing this professionally, uh, to just a whole new level. And so that's something I wanna share a lot about, like partly testing the ideas that have been coming through with the, you know, how the, the psychedelic explorations have been opening me up to new possibilities, new ideas. Feels like it's just integrating more of my thoughts and uh, making reality seem way more holistic. The, you know, everything connected, social life, connected to health and fitness, connected to uh, finances, connected to career and work, connected to life purpose, connected to spirituality, everything uh, interlinked and interconnected in ways that I really hadn't seen before. So it's really nudged my thinking down so many interesting paths. And that's something I really want to explore and express a lot of this year. So if you're interested in that kind of thing, I think you'll really like this uh, this year and how it unfolds. Uh, I'll also share more specifics about you know what I'm learning from the psychedelics and how that's going. Um, I don't wanna overdo that part of it though, uh, cause I don't really wanna turn this into a psychedelics channel, but more like take the input and the information, the ideas, the new possibilities that that kind of exploration opens up and then apply it to other aspects of self-development. What I do wanna move away from more though is what I see the very surface level of self-development as being, uh, you know, writing articles about productivity. If you're interested in that sort of thing, like, you know, which apps to use to organize your to-do list. Uh, I don't think I'm going to go there this year. Um, you can read old articles I've written from 20 years ago, 15 years ago, if you want to see some of that kind of stuff, or just you know follow along with some other community that's really into that kind of stuff. So the uh, the overly 
objectified topics, you know, the ones that they're really rooted to, to an objective version of life. I'm not really interested in that so much. I'm very much more interested in uh, just opening up exploration of possibilities, uh, creativity, something that's you know, exciting to me. Um, just all the things we could open up with our imagination. In particular, also um, relationships, just exploring relationships with other people. Um, I've been getting involved more in um, local communities here in Las Vegas, including a, a local psychedelics meetup group, which has been fabulous. Um, and I love going to it. So I was even talking to the uh, people uh, running it and asking to get more involved because they have a nonprofit. And so that's something I want to invest in more here in Las Vegas. In fact, this month is my 20 year anniversary of uh, when I first moved to Las Vegas. It was January 2004 that I first moved here from Los Angeles. So I loved it. Uh, Vegas, I often think of like sort of on a spirit level. It's almost like a spaceport type of city, like a spiritual nexus. The way it presents itself to the rest of the world, sort of like, uh, you know, Sin City, gambling capital, capital, uh, you know, drugs, drinking, that sort of thing. But behind the scenes, something very different, very spiritual in a way. Uh, definitely felt called to live here. With 40 million tourists coming here each year, there's so much energy flowing through the place, flowing through the city. And I love that. One thing I find really fascinating is how psychedelics really opens up a different perspective on human relationships, relating to other people, sensing more people's vibes and spirit energies and where they are in their self-development journey or their karmic journey. Uh, that's really fascinating to explore. So uh, I especially love just like the combination of um, psychedelics and getting more into social space, connecting with different kinds of people and seeing what the social possibilities are. It's like, uh, communicating less through words with people and feeling more of an energetic or vibrational connection with people. Uh, that's something that's been just unfolding really, really beautifully. And that leads to the next idea, uh, which I want to focus on this year. And this is more on the personal side, but I imagine it's going to show up on the professional side too, which is balance. In past years, I've gone and done so many different kinds of deep dives where it's uh, an obsession for a while. And this year, I really want to focus on kind of evening out some of those spikes, even with exploring psychedelics, where it could be very spiky. <laughs> you know, you can have a big trip. I'm less interested, interested in those kinds of experiences and more drawn to kind of just a steady flow of, you know, say microdosing, mini dosing now and then. I'm very sensitive to certain substances, particularly magic mushrooms. So, you know, 200, 300 milligrams sends me really tripping. I don't need mega doses of it. Small, you know, microdoses, 50 milligrams, 75 milligrams, they really are um, just, you know, eye-opening by themselves. It doesn't take a lot. So I find like having that steady connection to it where I can kind of dip in and explore and meet the energy of it halfway, that is really, really powerful. So even with an exploration like that, which can be taken to extremes, I want to find a way to weave it into the overall threading of my life in a more balanced way. And that's going really well so far. The next idea I want to explore is something I'm calling action spirals. It's like taking uh, the idea of habits or routines, which helps you get balanced progress in some area of life to another level where you keep improving the routine or you keep improving the habit as you go. So it's like progressive training, say with weight training, where you keep increasing the weights a little bit to get stronger and stronger and stronger uh, applied to other kinds of habits too. So I've been uh, opening up that kind of exploration a lot in the past couple months or so, and that's been going really, really well. Uh, that's one thing I want to apply to video so that I don't just get into the habit of making videos, but I also focus on the spiral aspect of videos so I can keep kind of spiraling up, making better videos, more interesting topics for people, going deeper into the explorations and so on, so that the hopefully uh, the progression of videos throughout the year improves. It gets better. Next exploration that's been coming up a lot that I want to get more into this year is this idea of karma or our karmic human journeys. And I see that as a combination of actions and consequences. And, you know, you can even take that to the level of looking at it through a non-physical reality lens too, like what happens in the spirit space, uh, say after we pass away, uh, do, we, do we have multiple lives? How, how are, do our karmic journeys unfold in that context? Um, I don't really look at this from a standpoint of needing to believe in anything. I look at it from a standpoint of 
playing around with possibilities and considering them. And I don't have a problem um, holding even uh, seemingly contradictory ideas in mind together and exploring them both as just equally viable options. So with karma, that one's that's one um, I find especially interesting just to look at life through that lens. Thinking, especially this year, how to create uh, more more positive karma in the world uh, through actions. You know, paying attention to the consequences, the ripples, and focusing on positive intentions for all of that. And then also helping people with their own karmic journeys, trying to help people understand the relationship, which can be very complicated between their actions and the consequences, the life or the situation that they find unfolding around them and helping people make changes there when they want to uh, change that, that pathway they're on. Um, I feel like I'm in a place right now of just amazingly positive karma, just lots of beauty and flow coming through and uh, just wanting to keep investing more and more in that type of uh, unfolding. Next thing uh, is Conscious Growth Club. Now that's in our seventh year right now. And on May 1st, 2024, we'll be starting our eighth year. We always open for new members the last week of April. So we only have a one week opening each year for new members to join. That's our online community where we have a lot of different, a lot of different activities, Zoom calls. We have a, a 24 seven uh, private discussion forum where members connect. Think of it like the community around this work you know, the people who are most invested in it, all getting together online and encouraging and supporting the heck out of each other. So we all uh, invest in each other's growth and we do our best to help each other move forward. Problem solve, mastermind together. Uh, we have you know, many different kinds of call formats where we do discussions and, and, and such. Uh, this year, I really want to focus on growing CGC more. Now, I don't necessarily control that, but I'm open to it becoming bigger than it is. Instead of dozens of members, I think it would be cool to really grow it up to eventually hundreds of members or even beyond. Uh, and we'll see if that happens. I'm not particularly attached to that because I'm more interested in the vibe of the people who, who join. And one, one advantage of just having a one week opening each year is that people are, when they join, they're in it for a year. We handle all the, you know, the launch and the promoting of it and then inviting people in. And then the whole rest of the year, we can focus on just the service side and the connection side. And that's working really well. Um, so I'm really excited, especially to have a more spirit level kind of year uh, for CGC year eight. It's definitely been unfolding that way a lot in year seven. Year seven has been uh, definitely my favorite year in CGC so far. So I'm really looking forward to year eight. And in year eight, I think I want to take it at least invite people who are interested in this to take it in an even more spiritual direction. You know, focus more on the, the spirit level kind of connections that this community can have. And I already see signs that there are some members that are really um, liking that idea. Uh, so they're looking forward to that, that kind of transition when we start year eight on May 1st. The next thing uh, that's gonna be part of this year is finally getting the Engage course up and running. This is a course about creating a more engaging relationship with life and with reality. And this one, I had the idea to do it quite a while ago, well over a year ago. And I started working on it a bit last year. But the way I started working on it, I realized this is not the pathway I wanna go down. I was sort of co-creating it with some AI tools and I thought, no, this is not, this is not meant to be like a course that's partly shaped by AI. Uh, so I, I, I threw out that whole idea of it and I just thought this needs to be a very different kind of course. And I felt like I really wanted to reach more into the spirit level to bring this course through. But I also felt like I had to go through a lot of growth myself to be able to get to the point where I was ready for that. And this transition into doing video is part of that. It's part of that journey uh, because I want this to be my first pre-recorded video course. So um, I think I'm still several weeks away from initiating the course and beginning it. I'm trying to feel out the timing there but I wanna do more YouTubing and more, you know, more creating videos first, sharing that, getting the vibes right and feeling my way into when the course wants to start being birthed and coming through. Uh, so I've done other video courses before, but they've all been from live sessions that we recorded. This one, I wanna record it and edit it and make it really nice and tight and then publish the videos, you know, one by one as we go. Uh, so when that's ready to come through, it'll come through. I do see it starting before the CGC launched this year. So starting before April, I think we can get this going, but we'll see. <laughs> One thing that's kind of hard to do when you really connect a lot with Spirit Space is estimating timing. I always get the timing signal when it's time to launch a new, new course. This will be the sixth course that I've created, I believe. 
I don't necessarily feel like I'm entirely in control of the timing. And when I try to force it, it doesn't really work. When I try to invite it and allow it and then sense when the timing is right, that's when we open it up, we launch, we invite people in. And that works really well. It leads to really awesome courses and awesome experiences, awesome uh, connections for the people who decide to get involved. Another change that's happening, this is more on the personal side. This year, I decided not to renew my membership in the Transformational Leadership Council. I first joined that group in 2009. It's basically a bunch of leaders, authors, speakers, trainers, and such who work in some aspect of self-development, uh, transformational work. And we would get together at two retreats in person each year for four or five days, always in January and July. It was a group started by uh, Jack Canfield, who's one of the co-authors of the Chicken Soup for the Soul books. Uh, and I, I started going to it in 2009. I was a member for four years. Then I took six years off. Then I came back to it and I was a member for the past five years or so. And I eventually kind of fell out of alignment with it again, like I did the first time. That's why I took six years off. Um, came back with a different kind of intention to it five years ago. But I also feel like mm, that group is just moving in a direction that is not aligned with where my journey wants to go. I feel like it's become too much of uh, kind of a retirement type of energy in the group. Like this is the kind of group I'd want to be in if all I want to do is coast into retirement and eventual passing away. And I'm not ready to do that. <laughs> Don't feel like that kind of vibe is part of me. Another, another aspect of the group that just doesn't resonate is I felt like it's become so much about co-validation. Like people in the field, patting each other on the back, congratulating each other, you know, showing lots of respect to each other for how great we all are. Uh, that doesn't feel aligned to me either because it takes me away from student mode. And I very much want to stay in that mode of exploration and learning. Um, I don't want to feel like I've become the kind of person who's teaching the stuff I've, I knew really well, like 10 years ago, 20 years ago. And here's my past learning, and I'm just regurgitating it today for the benefit of other people. That just doesn't feel exciting enough and passionate enough to me. It doesn't keep me um, in the flow. What I really like is teaching and sharing and inviting people into experiences that are right at the edge of what I'm experiencing growth-wise. The front edge of it, the stuff that I'm just learning and making sense of as I go. Uh, psychedelics is one, um, one, you know, one area where I feel like I'm, I'm, I'm just learning so much and figuring things out as I go, and I'm not like an experienced expert where I can share, here are all the answers and here's all the structure of it. Uh, I'm building it as I, as I go and understanding as I go. And I, I like that kind of teaching and I find there's a, an audience for that. People who like learning from that where somebody else is sharing from the front edge of their knowledge and their understanding and not having to pretend that you're some guru who understands it all and has it all mapped out, but rather sharing from your own learning, your own exploration. So I see myself as a bit of like a tour guide as I go through this. Um, and I, I love playing that, that kind of role. So this was the year that after nine years in the Transformational Leadership Council out of the last 15 years, I decided time to move on from that. It's not due to any bad blood with any, anyone in the group. I, I love the people in the group. I wish them well, uh, but my heart's calling me in a different direction. My spirit's calling me in a different direction, feeling like I need to be in a, a mode right now, especially this year, where I don't have such a strong reference group telling me who I am and who I'm supposed to be. I need to go back into sort of a blank space, a tabula rasa of uh, self-identity and just uh, kind of erase <laughs> that, uh, that, that reinforcement of who I've been, you know, the path I've been on so that I can create something new. So that's very exciting to me. I guess you could say it's a little bit scary, but I don't really feel any fear about it. It just feels adventurous and exciting and wonderful. Uh, another thing that's I, I kind of want to open up intentionally is doing more stuff with my wife, Rochelle. I just adore the heck out of her. Uh, we've been married since 2018. And before that, we've had a eight year long distance relationship since, since she's from Canada. Um, she permanently moved here in 2018 and we've been living together ever since. And I just, I love her. It's, you know, our relationship is so happy, so beautiful being in a relationship with somebody who has the same love strategy as you, like ours is touch and affection. So, uh, you know, a side note, one thing we've, we've done as a habit in our relationship is 
work on doing a one minute hug each day. Just hug each other for one minute. And that's just like so beautiful. Such a nice way to connect with your partner. I would love to get her more involved with the video journey too. And she has a background in live theater. So uh, she's done, you know, one woman shows across Canada that she wrote and produced and directed herself. Um, and I, I see this side of her that would love to get, that would, you know, I would just love to see her more on camera. Uh, she can be very funny too. But I'm not going to push her to do that. I'm just setting that as an intention, so don't tell her. <laughs> she may find out anyway. Uh, she knows, though. She knows I would love to see her more on camera. Uh, but I will, I will ask and invite you that if you do see her appear on camera, please give her extra encouragement because it will help bring her you know, into the front side of the camera more, um, which I think would be a, a lovely thing to explore, to be able to share this part of the journey with her, too. And lastly, I'll just open it up to you. What else... Um, are you interested in this year? What are your intentions for 2024? What do you, you know, want to see here? Either with respect to uh, what I've already shared, like which of these kinds of topics resonate with you. Uh, it's okay if not all of them do. I understand that. I know there's always, you know, shifting whenever I kind of change directions. I've gone through this many times before. It's always a bit of shifting in, in the people that resonate. Some people move closer and some people say, screw that and they leave. It's okay. I'm cool with all that. Because uh, I know it's so important to pursue alignment in life with what really lights us up inside. And I'm just sharing what really lights me up inside and where I you know, feel like the flow of this year is telling me it wants to go. Uh, so no hard feelings if you know, this doesn't resonate with you. But if anything does, let me know. Because uh, the, you know, seeing, seeing where people are expressing the most interest might help me get a sense of the weight for which topics I want to cover more, uh, especially in videos. And also, um, you know, beyond this, what are your intentions for 2024? I know this is, a, you know, in the, the, the backdrop here in the objective story of this life is that it's a pretty crazy um, atmosphere, right? All these crazy things going on in the world. Um, and I want to I wanna help people not feel so knocked off centered by that, to be able to feel more centered regardless of what's happening out there in the world and to be able to create more of the experience uh, that you want to have in this life and also, you know, I see that as one of the benefits of focusing on the connection to the non-physical aspects of life, being able to extend our sensory perceptions beyond just the, you know, what, uh, say, we, we pick up from uh, social media or the news or, you know, what we think is going on in the world and getting a sense of what's the, actually the story that's happening on an energy level, vibrational level, what's the purpose beyond all this and I'm beginning to see more and more of that coming through. And it's extremely uh, empowering and positive. It helps me reframe all the stuff that's going on in the world and going, ah, okay, now I see why that's happening. Now I understand a little bit more about why we have to have, keep having these cycles of war and conflict and it seems like history repeating itself and how it loops into people's karmic journeys, having a lot less resistance to that kind of thing. And then asking myself, okay, what kind of role do I want to play in all of this? So... Uh, I'm super excited for 2024. I am ridiculously optimistic uh, about this year and looking forward to sharing this journey with you if you feel aligned with sharing it together. I certainly invite you to do so. Take care.